So the, the study is called FOSS COVID um, and it's a, a UK wide study across the four nations uh, to study the, the long term effects of um, COVID-19 for those people that were admitted to hospital. Uh, we're aiming to recruit 10,000 people uh, and follow them up for a year in the first instance, but we've also got permission to follow them up for 25 years uh, from their health uh, healthcare records. Still really an early disease if you think we didn't even know about this virus a year ago. So we are um, still only about six months post the, the acute wave, certainly in the UK. That's obviously slightly differently internationally. So we're still very much at the point where we're learning about what these long term after effects are. I don't think anyone was particularly expecting them um, you know based on the uh, acute illness and certainly what we're what we are learning um, and I run a clinical service here as, as well as um, you know being one of the leaders of the FOSP um, study but it become it's become very apparent to clinicians seeing this group of patients that it can happen to or the long-term effects can happen to people that were young perfectly fit before and perhaps even had a fairly mild acute illness uh, enough to bring them to hospital but maybe only stayed a day or to and yet they are having these lasting effects of fatigue breathlessness not quite able to concentrate as well as before certainly a lot of young people that haven't been able to get back to work you know and are getting quite frustrated by that and obviously there's a lot of other uh, ramifications from that so um it certainly isn't only the older people with um pre-existing long-term conditions that are getting these after effects I always want to also say, though, there are plenty of people that are making a full recovery um, because depending on who's listening to this, we obviously don't want to uh, cause too much concern either for people. If they feel that they've fully recovered, then they have. They don't need to be worrying about what else might be happening. Personally, I've been um, uh, qualified now as a, as a doctor in the NHS for 23 years um, and as a respiratory specialist, I've certainly not seen anything like this in, in my career. Um, I think the closest we've had um, in the UK was the um, HIV crisis. Um, but even that wasn't quite at the scale, pace, volume um, as COVID-19. So I think it, it's hit the, the, the public and the health service, both in its volume um, uh, acutely, but also in the after effect. And then obviously trying to stop the virus through the general public has taken on measures that, that none of us have seen in, in, in our lifetimes. We're now three to six months down the line from the big wave in the UK and certainly in clinic we're seeing a lot of people that have still got ongoing symptoms and, and ongoing symptoms to the degree that they cannot get back to their normal, uh, their normal lives say I'm a respiratory consultant and and so I've certainly not come across uh, those patients before in my clinical practice whereas I see plenty of typical pneumonia uh, and although you know even pneumonia can be a severe illness and sometimes people can take weeks to recover but usually by six weeks and certainly by three months the vast majority of young people that would have got that are better and back at work um, so certainly I haven't seen something Thing to this extent with such as you quite rightly highlighting such a variety of different recovery patterns and that's why we're really wanting to study that at scale across the UK and in detail uh, and we also need to do it at pace because obviously we need to find out well what you know what are the mechanisms that are causing some people to be able to recover perfectly easily and well and go back to work and uh, do all the things that they wanted to do before and other people really have got these symptoms symptoms for months afterwards.